Also think about sometimes when you see pictures of Yahawashi and his head or his face will be illuminated. He may have what they call a, a halo behind his head or even sometimes you'll see his heart radiating and it'll be illuminated as well. So we're going to go a little deeper into the mysteries of the illuminated heart. Where does light come from? A little bit of um, understanding eternity as well, or at least we're going to look into it. All right. So before I go forward, um, there is a movie that I saw when I was a, a, a child and it had a very, very big impact on me understanding a lot of the elements and characteristics that are needed and some of the things that you're going to experience on your spiritual journey, figuring out, you know, the location of the higher self and transitioning from the lower self into the higher self. And that movie is a movie called The Last Dragon. All right. It's called The Last Dragon. It came out in 1985. And of course, you know, for any of you all out there that have seen it, it talks about the martial artist by the name of Leroy. That's his name in the movie. And it shows how he goes through his journey from the lower self into the higher self and him locating the location um, or excuse me, him locating his own inner self or higher self. All right. And in the movie, you'll see, you know, in one of the last scenes, he has this final battle against the enemy who really represents the lower self. And there's a part where, you know, Leroy is kind of getting beat up and the enemy is dumping his head in the water. And he keeps asking him over and over. Who's the master? Who's the master? Who's the master? And as he dumps Leroy's head in this water, asking him, who, asking him who's the master, Leroy starts having these memories of all the things he had been through along the line, along his journey up until that point. You know, thinking about the beautiful woman that was, you know, um, one of his associates during the movie and she liked him. But she always was telling him that, man, you the master, you seem like you a good fighter to me. You know, thinking about certain things that his friends told him and even thinking about what his grandmaster had told him in martial arts. So after he was being repeatedly dumped into this water, he eventually came back up. And as the enemy asked him, who's the master for that final time, Leroy said that I am. And then he started glowing a bright um, light, just like Moses and just like Yahweh did. And after that, he was able to defeat the enemy. So before we go into our reading, what I want you to understand and get is, is that in order to receive this eternal light, um, that light of Moses or that light of Leroy or that light of Yahweh in order to receive that eternal light, humility and an awakened heart is key. OK, now the humility aspect is, is, you know, you're not letting the ego puff you up. You're not thinking that you are bigger than any other of God's creations. You look at yourself as basically a servant to God. You want to see, well, what is it that I can do down here that can contribute to the greater agenda and objective for God's creation, meaning that what is it that God is trying to achieve or wants to achieve? And what is it that I can do to assist in that versus me always being so consumed with what is it I can do to satisfy my desires? Or what is it that I can get into in this material world that'll bring me some type of a pleasure? Or what is it that I can do to inflate my individuality? So we got to understand this, although we are individual human beings and although we were given free will, the high power, what some call God, Allah Most High, it wants us to choose to voluntarily return to it and voluntarily have an open heart so we can receive the light and receive the inspiration and receive the motivation that the Most High wants us to have. So when you see people down here um, you know, on earth and it seems like they're in their purpose, you know, everybody likes them, they get along with everybody, they seem like to be in abundance when it comes to material. A lot of the times it's because they've actually, you know, reached that inner self and they're doing the objective that, you know, really their whole spirit was um, intended to do while it was brought here. All right. So just keep in mind that some of the attributes that we want to work on and even myself, you know, this is something that I constantly work on, you know, so I take the same medicine, but it's just remaining in humility um, and not being too quick to anger and also being patient when it comes to a lot of things. And not getting caught up into this material world, you know, getting caught up always into some type of a material gratification and not letting that selfish ego take over. Because that's really what the demonic satanic mindset is, is that selfish ego. All right. So. What I'm going to be reading from 
is an article that I got from a website called nearmuhammad.com. So the website is called nearmuhammad.com. You spell that N U R M U H A M M A D.com. So that's nearmuhammad.com. The name of the article is called Secrets of the Eyes Light Eternity Part One. Secrets of the Eyes Light Eternity Part One. So if you want to, you know, find what I'm talking about and just visit this website because um, this Sheikh, he has a lot of good books he's written and he puts out a lot of articles and videos on YouTube as well. His name is Nur Muhammad. So you can check this brother out and, um, you know, get some good information. Very good information. But that's the article that I'm coming from because he, you know, he had a good one on this divine light or this glow. So we want to use this to assist us in our studies. So as usual, we're going to go through our reading and then I'll stop and we'll review and analyze certain things together um, and then go forward. OK. So the first part we're going to read is about on or the light. Now, of course, you know, your boy Blackbeard, his Arabic, and his Hebrew may not be the best, but we all are learning and we getting better at it. So some of it I'm going to try to pronounce or spell it for you and you can check it out for yourself. But this term newer. N U R. When you hear me use the word on nur, that means the light in Moorish Arabic, okay? Or ancient, but really a, a Moorish Punic Latin also. So on nur is the divine light or the light that Moses was radiating or that glow that Leroy had or the glow that Yahweh has that you receive from God Most High, okay? Through the heart. So let's read about it. So on nur, the light. Like light reads a CD, you read Quran through the light of your heart. Now, before I move forward, I also want to say this, too. We should be not only studying the Quran, but also the Bible and the scriptures as well. So if you are a person and you're already familiar with the Quran, that means that you should be, you know, looking through the Bible and scripture because those actually are two halves to one book, believe it or not. And if you're already familiar with the Bible, then you should now start looking through the Quran because believe it or not, they say the same things and they do not contradict each other. So let's go through this. It says, like a light reads a CD, you read Quran through the light of your heart. There are people who are coming to belief. Immediately Allah or God, once again, the word Allah is just God in Arabic. So you may hear me say Allah Most High. You may hear me say God Most High, but there is only... But there's only one God, so I'm talking about the same one. Immediately, Allah or God grants them a nur or light. It is a nur, but not yet from the ocean of realities of Hayat. Now, Hayat is life or the oceans of reality. So when I use this word nur, think of this divine light like you see on your screen. And when I use the word Hayat, think of an eternal ocean. Okay, an eternal ocean. So you see right here in front of you how we have this divine light and we also have this eternal ocean. OK, so think of the divine light and this eternal ocean, both being creations of the most high. All right. So just just keep that in mind. So let's move forward. So it says that. These these are like two cups and we are asked to fill them. As much as we feel them from God's attributes, it's endless. It is never enough. It never takes anything from God. But they begin to teach us the perception and understanding. Somebody comes to belief. They are granted a newer or light. Within their eye, they have a light. They read Holy Quran and they only understand something very basic. So keep in mind that when it comes to this light and this eternal ocean, that God is of abundance. So that means that if we're ready to receive as much light as possible, then the light will continue to be sent over and over and over and over and over because God doesn't run out of it. All right. And this light also is basically um, housing information. So a lot of us receive information through this light, just like how plants receive information through light, etc. Well, we understand that in technology. In a CD, CD is a plastic like a mirror, but encoded with millions of information. 
there is a reader that hits the CD to get the information. Based on the quality of that light, if it hits that mirror or CD and retrieves information, they begin to teach that when God begins to send newer or light into the heart and that light begins to reflect through the eyes. When the eye looks at the entry level, the eye has very little light. It is still struggling just to flicker. So basically how it says a CD, you know, when you play a CD or at least, you know, some of us that can remember, um, you would play the CD, but a light would hit the CD when you put it in a CD player. And all the information that's encoded on the CD and the various zeros and ones, however it may be arranged, the pattern, uh, whatever actual information was um, encoded in it. Once that light hit it, you'll be able to receive or retrieve that information. So the heart works the same way. The heart receives the light and it's receiving that information. And believe it or not, through your consciousness, this is how you actually get your instruction and guidance. So a lot of us, when we seek that guidance and instruction for what path should we be on in our life? Am I doing the right thing or, you know, just certain things we're trying to figure out? The heart is actually what, you know, you need to be going to to get some type of an understanding because that's where all your wisdom is. So let's move forward. All right, let's see where we're going next. So now we're going to go to the ever living. Let me move forward. All right. So now I'm going to read about what's called Al Hay or the ever living, the ocean of eternity. All right. Now, this, you know, is going to be very critical because we think of an ocean, we also think of water, right? Endless amounts of water. So that's how we look at eternity. You know, as this endless ocean, okay? And I also want you to keep in mind where in the movie The Last Dragon, Leroy came to his consciousness after his head was repeatedly being dipped in that water. So I almost think of like a baptism or think of um fully dipping yourself within this eternal ocean. Okay. So that means that you're getting rid of your ego. All right. Um, let's think about this. So you got a big ocean, all right. And let's say you got a bottle. You take that bottle and you get a bottle of water. And let's say you take that bottle of water and you walk off. Now, when that bottle of water is in your hand, it thinks that it's a bottle of water that's individual. It doesn't really know that it came from a source. And there's a greater source that it comes from. But as it's this individual bottle of water, it may develop an ego. It's going to say that I'm the only bottle of water. I'm the greatest water. I know everything about water. I this, I that. Not knowing that it really came from a greater source. So the same thing with that eternal light within us. All right. Or or even our individuality. We may be individual people, but our own soul, it came from a much greater soul. All right. Which is what we call God or Allah Most High, the universe, whatever you may want to call it. So we don't want to get caught up in that ego by trying to separate ourselves from the greater creation. So let's let's keep going. Let me see where I was at. Let's get okay, here we are. It's just a few things in this section I wanted you to get. Let me see. All right, so check this out. So it says, The eternal ocean of ever living is. No, we're not going to read that part. My bad. It was another part I was going to get to. Let me see. Y'all just bear with me a minute. Oh, here we are. Wait a minute. There you go. All right. Here we are right here. All right. Here we are. So the next thing we're going to read about is um that ocean of eternity. So remember now, if it's an ocean of eternity, where eternal light comes from, eternal knowledge, eternal wisdom, eternal guidance, eternal instruction, meaning that anything that it is that you need, that eternal light within you has connection to the greater source. 
So if you just open up your heart, you'll be able to receive whatever it is you need to take care of business down here. So when you are in your higher self, you basically are in a mindset and, and, and a state of abundance. All right. A state of abundance. Um, this is very important because some of us are living down here in this material world and we're surrounded by um, a society where we're judged with, you know, based on what we have. So somebody may look at us and say, well, we don't have this type of money. So they treat you a certain way or you don't have this type of car or you don't have this type of home. So some people may look down upon you. And if you're not careful, this has, you know, an ability to attack your self-esteem and your self-image. All right. And this will lead you to do things that are outside of yourself just because you're trying to please society and things of that nature. So we have to watch, you know, getting caught up in a lot of this stuff in the material world, because more than likely people who have a, an abundance of material possessions, they don't have a, an abundance of that divine light. And if you have an abundance of the divine light, not only do you have access to getting whatever type of material possessions you want, but since you understand what's more relevant, you're not really concerned with it. All right. So when we get into things like, you know, our inner self, our higher self, you know, spirituality, um, when we go into our meditations and prayer and we're trying to get guidance from the higher self, we really want to use it for more spiritual purposes. You know, for things like, you know, getting money down here and stuff like that. We don't want to use our spirituality for that uh, because there are more important things. than something that's serious, some, something that's simple, rather, as, you know, just some money. If we want to get some money, then we need to go get a job, get a career um, or get into the world of entrepreneurship and come up with some type of goods and services and just go through the grind and go through the process of that. And eventually you'll come across some physical money. But we don't want to use our spirituality and our um, divine energy for that. All right. So let's read this real part, this, this part real quick. Excuse me. So it says that. So there's a word in Arabic called. Kothar, K-A-W-T-H-A-R. It's called Kothar, K-A-W-T-H-A-R. And it says Kothar, to be from the people of the Kothar is the fountain of abundance. So it says, Allah says, quote, we have given you from the fountain of abundance and great, the ocean of greatness. So just keep that in mind. Like, you know, your higher self or your innermost self is already connected to the abundance of knowledge and wisdom and understanding. So whatever it is you need to achieve down here, if you're doing your if you on your job spiritually, then a lot of your physical material things will be taken care of by default. So understand this, put more attention and focus into your inner self, into your heart, into your own inner divine spirituality and make that the priority and make that what's relevant in your life. And I can promise you when it comes to things like getting money that will follow easily. When it comes to things like attracting the opposite spouse, whether that be a male or female, that will come relatively easily. When it comes to keeping your health right, that will come easy. When it comes to getting certain little material possessions and things you want, that will come relatively easy. Now, why would all those things come easy? Because you've made your innermost self or the most relevant thing in your life a priority, which is actually your spirituality. All right. You've made that the number one thing in your life. All right. So always keep that in mind when you make. Um, like I said, that your divine purpose, the divine intent behind why you're here, when you make that the number one thing in your life, a lot of the other stuff will take care of itself. So just keep that in mind as well. All right. Let me see where we at. All right. So we're going to move forward. Sorry about that, y'all. All right, here we are. So it says, one hour of contemplation is worth more than 70 years of worship. Quote, 
one hour of contemplation is more valuable than 70 years of worship, end quote. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So it says one hour of one hour of contemplation, like 70 years of worship. Why? Because you have because you just have newer or light. But the servant who has light and access to the eternal ocean is like an ocean and mountain of difference in their reality. All that reality within their heart, wherever they contemplate to their ability and the strength of their soul. Allah will remind them that Allah has taught them. Now their levels is going higher and higher and higher. It's unimaginable what Allah has taught. Nobody can put a limit on Allah. No one can come and say that. No, Allah didn't teach that. So what, it, what this is getting at is, is that. What we call meditation and contemplation. Believe it or not, is you silencing that ego. And receiving the messages from the innermost heart. This is the higher self or the innermost self guiding you and leading you. That's really what contemplation and meditation is about. All right. So through that, you get to go through these various levels of understanding and um, it, it makes your life easier. All right. Basically, that's what I wanted to say. It makes your life easier. So keep in mind, too, that I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with people who who may have certain, let's say, religious, ritualistic and ceremonial practices, such as like in Catholicism, you know, you have in the synagogues, there are certain ceremonial practices in the Christian church, you know, in the mosque, etc. But the true thing is, is that we're down here to achieve a certain goal. And we are also down here to understand that we need to learn to refine the lower self and transition into the higher self. So it's not about just doing ritualistic ceremonial behaviors and actions and then thinking, that OK, now I can just get back into the kingdom of heaven. Like, no, nah, it don't work like that. Like, just like you got some people in the so-called black community, you know, they'll be going out doing dirt six days a week and then they'll call themselves going to church on Sunday and then they'll be holy for a few hours. And then they'll think that they have been cleansed and purified and now they can just go back out. And just, you know, do another six days of what they want to do. And then another one that's even a little crazier than that is, is a lot of them may just think they can proclaim or profess within their own mind that they believe that, quote unquote, Jesus Christ died for their sins. And that's just it. They just go on with their lives. Then they don't really change their behavior, um, their mindset, etc. So we got to watch out for the lower self and how it'll use deception by thinking that. You know, just because you're wearing a turban or just because you show you go to church every Sunday or just because you don't curse or just because during Ramadan you did everything right. You got to watch out how the lower self will make you think you're holy and divine and getting closer to the, the, your higher self just because you're doing a lot of these physical things. All right. So I'm not saying that these some of the stuff isn't good to do. You know, you do whatever it is that you're led or guided to do. But understand that. Um. The inner self is, is really what's most important. All right. This is what's most important. So the next thing we're going to do. The next thing I'm going to do right now, I'm going to read um, and we're going to talk about what is here to destroy your faith and actually to destroy your inner light. And we're going to talk about the jaw system of deception because a lot of us have seen the one eye symbolism that the Freemasons use and these people that call themselves the quote unquote Illuminati. We see them using a one eyed symbolism. So let's go a little bit into what this is. And um, I've actually talked about this in prior tapes. But we'll go into it again right here. To understand how this is implemented is the Dajjal or the deceiver system. Whether the people say the Dajjal or the deceiver is here or that he is coming, that doesn't matter. The system which Prophet Muhammad wants us to understand is that Dajjal has a corrupt vision of the material world. His one eye is damaged 
it means the eye that is damaged is the eye that has no near light of faith of the ever living. As a result, the light from his other eye doesn't emanate, but it pulls the light of faith. To understand the importance of the Dajjal system in the material world is that there is no Hayat or no everlasting. So let's talk about this. So, although we are down here in the material world, what we have to understand is, is that, yes, the physical life may be temporary, but the soul and the spirit continues to live on. And there is an access to eternity that we can align ourselves with if we take care of business down here like we're supposed to. So there are two aspects to the eyes. You have the divine light in one eye, which is, I believe, the right eye. And in the left eye, you have the eternal ocean or the eternity. OK, and through this connection. This is how you're able to be in your higher self. So we know that when the physical body ceases to exist, that eternity or life will continue to go on. So we don't have that mindset like, well, OK, I'm here in Earth. I really don't know what's going to happen after this. So I got this YOLO attitude. I'm a you know, you only live once. I'm going to do what do what thou wilt. Um, there is no consequence. I'm going to just, you know, do the material thing. And then when I die, I die. That's it. I just deal with what I deal with at that point. Some people have that type of mindset. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend have that mindset because that is actually a deception. And what that is, is, is you trade your inheritance of the afterlife for the for the material world. Now, what this is talked about in the Bible is the story of, of Jacob and Esau. When it talks about. Esau was basically cooking some lentil soup and his brother. No, no, Jacob, excuse me. Let, me. let me rephrase that. Jacob was cooking some eat lentil soup or Israel. Jacob Israel was making some lentil soup. and His brother Esau had just come in and he saw him making the soup. And they began to have a conversation about the afterlife. And long story short, Esau did not believe in the afterlife, nor did he believe in the Messiah either. So since he didn't believe in it, he was very consumed with the material world. He chose to, you know, satisfy his desires and pretty much do what he wanted to do every day. Where Jacob Israel understood that there was an afterlife and that he should prepare himself for eternity. So since Esau didn't really believe in the afterlife or eternity, Jacob Israel told him that I'll trade you the birthright for a bowl of soup. And in his ignorance, Esau sold his birthright to eternity. Or his divine light for a bowl of soup. And that's pretty much what. What is being um, symbolized in that story. So what the Dajjal or the deceiver. And the servants of Satan. What they want to do is. Is get you to pull the Esau. They want to get you to trade your afterlife. Or trade your divinity. Trade your opportunity for eternity. For a bowl of lentil soup. Or trade it for some type of material possession. Traded for some type of comfortable, temporary, earthly circumstance that will only end after a matter of time. So they want you to trade something important for something that's not important. That's the whole, you know, symbol behind the Jacob and Esau thing. Esau didn't find the afterlife of his inner spirituality, his divine light. He didn't find that to be important. So because he didn't find it to be important, he traded it. Jacob, knowing the, the importance of the spirit, received an opportunity to get to that afterlife. OK, so that's what the whole, you know, the job system is about. It's about, you know, getting you to believe that the material world or what's called the dunya, D-U-N-Y-A, dunya or the material world, the earth, what we, you know, perceive with the five senses. That this is all it is. So you only live once. So go ahead, turn up, turn up or what? Or turn down for what? You know how in the music industry, I think it was a song they had, turn down for what? You know what I'm saying? That's like a Dajjal type of message. Turn down for what? There ain't no reason for you to be prepared for no afterlife. No, nah, live it up here. You know, and that's the, that's the mindset. So let's read again um, in this part. The men of God are the saints. Come to increase the ever living that you think about your soul and live for eternity in the law's ocean of power. And the jaw, the deceiver comes and says there is no Hayat 
or no ever living or no eternity. Live life to the fullest. Isn't that his logo on every commercial? You see somebody is running. What the heck are you running to? He says, live life to the fullest. The jaw system says, don't believe in heavens. You live life here. You enjoy here. You celebrate here. And the party ends here. Everything from that system is based on focusing here. So the Dajjal system, once again, is, is designed to keep you in the dunya, to keep you in the material world, to keep you caught up in your five senses, to keep you caught up in what you see, what, you, what, your, what your lower animal heart's desires are, to keep you caught up in what you want to feel in this material world. Now, I'm not saying that you're supposed to restrict yourself from, you know, having pleasant experiences here. I'm not saying that, but you got to understand what the more important thing is. So what you're really supposed to be doing is, is is training a lot of your opportunities and times to just satisfy and gratify your ego by doing some, you know, what you may think is a pleasurable thing here. You're supposed to be trading and sacrificing that to invest in your spirituality, to invest in your higher self so that divine light can bring you closer to eternity. Because just because we have the divine light doesn't mean we may have eternity. Eternity is something that we have to continue to work for every day, just like faith. It's, a, it's like a muscle. It's something that we got to continue to work out, continue to build and, 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 and continue to strengthen so it can actually manifest and we can get the full benefits and get the results from it that we want. But once again, the, 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 the Dajjal system of deception is designed to make you think that none of that is worth it. All right. Because remember, the Dajjal has a damaged eye. He has a damaged eye, meaning he does not receive light. So because he doesn't receive light, he's deceived himself. He doesn't even know that there is an hereafter. So because that's how he thinks, he wants everybody else to receive the same type of um, status that he has, which is to have no divine light, to be to be lightless and to not believe in the eternal and get caught up in the physical. And basically be trapped and be a slave to the physical and be a slave to the five senses. OK, because let me give you an example. Like this is the this is the, the jaw setup. You know how let's say when the new Jordans are come out. Right. I remember back when I was in like school and shit, the new Jordans would come out. Now, me, you know, I ain't had no money to get the new Jordans every weekend, but a few weekends, maybe I can get them. But let's say a person would just try to keep up with the new Jordans every weekend. And every time they got a pair, you know, they would like them, but they would see somebody else with a pair of Jordans that they didn't get. So instead of them being satisfied with what they had, they were always looking outside of themselves to see that, man, it's always something else out here that I don't have that I want. So that rat race of you continue to try to chase that every weekend, it ends up making you broke. You never get to actually enjoy and experience what it is you have. How I know that's true, because I got a lot of homeboys and and you know people that have the shoes but you won't even wear them you just leave them in the closet and stuff like that because a lot of that is just the, the jaw deception that we didn't really get the shoes because we liked them we probably got them because we was trying to keep up with some type of a societal you know acceptance or something like that you know so we just got to watch out for that type of trickery all right let's let's read this part the jaw's other eye is to take away all faith Every TV show that comes out, you look at it. You lost your faith. Brick by brick, Shaitan or Satan takes away faith, takes away faith and takes away faith until there are faithless people. Take away the light and now you have darkness. Either you are moving to the light and you feel the warmth of the light or you have turned away from the light and you feel now a cold darkness. The Dajjal system is to take away the light. Don't let anybody who speaks speak of faith. Have them speak and question the divine and take away faith. Have them curse and take away faith. Everything from the Dajjal system is to take away faith. So another thing, like a lot of people out here, you know, you got to watch a lot of these. These these so-called new age, you know, spiritual movements, like a lot of stuff out here that will tell you about meditation, contemplation and things of that nature. You may think that they telling you to get back in tune with the most high God, but a lot of it is just gratifying the ego because a lot of the, the jaw um, system 
and a lot of his agents out here, they know how to mask like they're beings of light. They know how to disguise themselves as beings of light, but they're really the, the imposters. They're really demonic people. So we're really living in an age now where, you know, a lot of good people who may be seeking the truth, but they don't have any light. They're going to be deceived by these false beings of light and these false prophets. So just because something is coming to you nice, it's coming to you sweet. It doesn't mean that it got your best interest. Just like the, you know, the story about the serpent or the enemy in the garden. It didn't come to Eve talking very loud and aggressive. It came talking very soft. Matter of fact, it actually, it whispers. It whispers. You see how I'm whispering? That's how the enemy does. It whispers in your ear. Satan don't come talking real loud and da 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 and, and talking aggressive. And nah, he don't, that ain't how it's going to come. The enemy of the shaitan and the demonic jinn, they whisper in your ear. They whisper the inspirations. They whisper the motivations into your heart. And then you actualize them and you manifest them. Okay. So just keep all that in mind um, and just, you know, have your spiritual defenses up. But, you know, this tape was ultimately to just, you know, do a review. All right. Just to do a review and help us understand that the answers to everything we need is within God most high already put the divine light within us. So we need to go into our spiritual weight room and get that light to get brighter and brighter and stronger and stronger. OK, get the heart to get stronger and stronger, get closer to eternity. OK, this is what we're supposed to be doing and figure out our purpose. All right. And reach our divine objective for being here. So. Just want to um, thank everybody out there for, you know, watching the tape. Um, if you can check out that movie, The Last Dragon with the glow, it'll give you a good, you know, little movie cinem cinematic um, depiction of what we're talking about. But just understand that the evils of the jaw, the evils of deception, they can only be destroyed by the glow. And that glow is coming from the inner light of eternity, which is located within the heart. So the higher self or the inner self is within the heart. And just guard your heart, you know, and, 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 and be 